Yo, k Pace Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? Today I'm gonna bring to you do's and don'ts in home theaters, but I just, I have a nitpick with some of you guys out there. Check down below on that red button, that subscribe button. Are you subscribed to the channel? Are you watching these videos unsubscribed? Okay, well let me tell you something. You better hit that big red button and hit that bell icon to let you know when I post a video. Don't come in here watching my videos no more unsubscribed. Do you understand? I don't want to tell you again. Yo, okay, Base Guy here. What's going on, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm going to give you do's and don'ts of home theater part three. If you missed the first two parts down below is a playlist called do's and don'ts of home theater. Go back and check those out because there's probably some advice that you may be able to use. But let's get started with part three. The first one that I'm bringing to you is do not spray your TV with household products, household cleaners. You don't want to spray the panel directly with the cleaner. You may leave a residue or some kind of oils in that cleaner that may damage the screen long term. You want to, if you're going to use household cleaners at all, you want a microfiber towel or a, a paper towel and spray it on the paper towel lightly. Don't soak it, but lightly, and then do a left to right motion or up and down motion. Avoid doing circular motions because a lot of the panels now, gloss panels and such, they scratch or you can leave that residue on there and you do not want to. I suggest not using household cleaners at all unless it's made for the TV. Reason being is because of what we just mentioned, you might leave a residue on it. There are TV cleaner, TV panel cleaners out there. On the back of your TV, it's fine. Use your wood dust cleaner, or use your household all-purpose cleaner and clean the mess out of the back. <laughs> but on the screen itself, there are materials, there are um, resources for panels themselves so that you can clean them effectively without damaging them or leaving a residue. So please do not, do not spray your TV. <laughs> Next on our list is do not plug your electronics, your equipment directly to the wall. You're like, hey, piss guy. What the heck are you talking about? How am I supposed to get power? You don't plug them directly to the wall. Please use a surge protector. I vouch for this in almost every other video. Please use a surge protector. You put money into your system, especially if it's a large system, a heavily built system. You put a lot of money into that. You probably don't want things to be fried. I remember when I was younger, I was about 19 years old and a random storm came through and it was it, the, it was the loudest strike of, of lightning and thunder that I've ever seen or ever heard. And it fried one of my pieces of equipment, my AV receiver, and it was like $1,200. And it was gone in an instant because it wasn't on a surge protector. And now nothing in my house is not on a surge protector anymore. And I highly recommend that for you. If you want to take it a step above, if you are super into electronics, AV equipment, home theater equipment, you want to put it on a power conditioner as well. Because not only does it uh, act as a surge protector, keeping your electronics safe, but it also cleans up the power that's coming from the wall. When you plug your system into the wall, it's what we call dirty power, meaning that signal brings us a lot of interference, a lot of electrical noise into the system, into the sound, if you're listening to music or watching movies. You don't want that. You want your performance to be optimal and you want your equipment to last as long as possible. So sending it dirty power, is just lowering its lifespan. You wanna put it on a power conditioner that cleans and filters that power before it sends it to all of your equipment so that it performs at its best it lasts its longest and it sounds its greatest. And so put it on a power surge protector, no less. Put it on a surge protector if you, or on a power conditioner if you can. Don't do it on both. Don't plug your power conditioner to your surge protector. Do not do that. One or the other. I suggest the power conditioner. But anyway, don't plug it up to the wall. <laughs> All right, number three, coming at you fast. Did you catch that? You didn't catch that. Coming at you number three. Do not stuff all of your electronics in a cabinet unless it's very ventilated, meaning the back is open or you have fans inside. If you don't have fans in your entertainment stand and you have your receiver in there, you have a DVD player or an amplifier, that's a lot of heat just trapped inside those cabinets. And heat is the quickest thing to destroy your system. A lot of modern day receivers and amplifiers kind of already run hot. So when you put them inside an enclosed area, you're just asking for things to burn out, to overheat and fail over time. If you have an entertainment center where you can open, take off the back panel and let that air escape, that's perfect. 
little fans that you can get from Amazon. They're not a lot of money. Stick a couple fans in each of your uh, compartments so that everything in there can breathe and recirculate clean air. Um, even when you put things inside a cabinet, it's not just about heat, but dust. How often, and I'm speaking for the, the majority of people out there, how often do you get into your cabinet and really clean the dust that collects on the doors, on the top of the shelves, around and underneath your equipment? Nobody really gets that enough. And so that dust can get into the top of those vents on your equipment and it could you know, prematurely ruin everything that's inside. So if you don't have to, don't put all your stuff into one cabinet, have it on an AV rack or somewhere separate, kind of spaced out and open. If you have to use a, a entertainment center, Make sure it's open, ventilated, have some fans in there, and keep that air circulating. All right, this one you've heard many, many times, but it seems to be a common thing. Do not set any of your speakers to large, meaning don't go into your AV receiver and set them to full range. Don't set them to large, set them to small. And people have a misconception of what small means in an AV receiver. Small does not mean that you're using a bookshelf or a satellite. Small means that your speakers aren't full range, meaning they can't handle sub 20 hertz, you know, 25 hertz at a high volume. They can't handle that. And so setting your speakers to small protects your speakers during high volumes and enables you to set a crossover so that all the speakers blend together and work seamlessly. When you set a traditional speaker to large, you're sitting that thing subwoofer type bass. And if you turn it up too much, those drivers are going to blow. You are going to wear down the motor inside that speaker cabinet, and you're gonna have to get a new speaker over time, depending on how long you have it at high volumes. Setting your speakers to small, make sure that every speaker is only performing where it's necessary and not trying to do too much. And you'll usually get a better sound that way, um, but it doesn't mean you're starving yourself a bass. You're still gonna get all the performance, but you're gonna be able to set the performance level and make sure that none of your speakers are overworking um, because that could cause problems. So set your speakers to small, every single one of them, unless you have 15, 20 feet tall speakers like Audioholics does, you may not wanna set it to large. So make sure you're careful with that. Now, there may be an exception. If you're not using a subwoofer, you may wanna play around with it or still set it to small, but cross it over at 40 hertz. Or if you are lucky enough to have a big home with big speakers, then of course, set it to large. But more times than not, it's not going to work for you. Even if you think it does, if you turn it too loud, you are risking it. You're risking it all, so don't do it. All right, my final don't is do not place your surround sound speakers too high on the wall or too high in general. And the reason being is because you want everything to be around your ear level because when you're sitting down, you want everything can kind of be in this head space. Not too much over your head, not too much under your head. You kind of want it to float here and you want all speakers to be there. If you, especially in today's age, if you place your speakers too high, you start to change how your brain perceives that sound and where it's coming from. For example, if I have a little child on my right and a little child on my left and they're running around next to me, I want to hear that in my system that they're running around next to me. But if my speakers are too high and those children are running around, it's going to sound like they're flying. They're flying and running on top of the ceiling. And if you um, have that issue, it's going to throw off your experience when you're watching a movie, especially in a movie. You want things on the screen to be heard the way you see it. And so if you're hearing something up top, but on the screen it's at the bottom, it's a super distraction and you're starving yourself of some realism. So make sure you don't put your speakers, any speakers too high for that matter, unless they're meant to be up there, like Dolby Atmos, DTSX, or ODD. Those are the only speakers that need to be up in the air, way above ear level. Everything else, try to get it firing kind of right here in this area. If you find your speakers to be harsh, you can have them a little bit higher, turn them off axis, a little bit lower, whatever you want to do, but kind of keep it around your head space so that it all sounds really accurate. All right, guys, that's going to do it for do's and don'ts of home theater part three. Leave me a comment down below and let me know out of all five that we mentioned, how many are you guilty of right now? Let me know that down below in the comment section and also let us know any other do's and don'ts you guys have for some of the new guys in the block. And if you aren't a new guy in the block, kind of give some of your tips and tricks on how you've perfected your home theater. Let us know that in the comment section down below and you better subscribe because I'm not playing. We will see you guys in the next video. Keep this guy out. Peace.